Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to wrap a shaker kitchen cabinet using a product called DC Fix. Once you have cleaned and primed your door, roll out the product and lay the door on top. Make sure that you leave enough on either edge. There are grid lines there to help you to make sure that you've got enough space around the cabinet door. Cut the sheet to size. Shaker cabinets need to be fitted in strips. So here I'm marking out a strip for either side of the door and then the middle section will be used to cover the middle part of the door. Once marked out, all of the strips can then be individually cut. Make sure that each strip is cut slightly larger than the strip on the front of the door. They do need to be folded over onto the back and fixed in place. Cut each of the strips to size. Lay each of the cut strips onto the door, making sure that you've got enough overhang to fit behind the door. If you have any gaps, you will need to recut another piece. Make sure that you've got plenty to work with. Gently peel back the edge of the backing paper. Peel back slightly, but don't take off too much as it will stick to the door and you will need to pull off and it makes it more difficult to work with. Line up the product, making sure that you've got enough overhanging on each side. It may help to have someone hold the end of it for you. Start to press down with the squeegee and gently pull back the backing paper as you move along the edge. Don't fix down too much at this stage, just go past the first corner. Using a sharp knife, cut past the overhang into the corner. My door has an indentation on each of the edges. So I'm just pulling back slightly and using the squeegee to push down into the indentation mark on the frame of the door. Smooth out any air bubbles and continue fixing the rest of the strip to that side of the door. Repeat cutting the overhang on the other corner. Using the squeegee, begin to push down the product over that edge. Make sure it's fixed down securely to that inner panel. Repeat the process of pressing the product down into the indentation on the other corner. Use a straight edge such as a ruler and a sharp knife to cut off the excess. Do not cut directly into the indentation ridge. Instead, cut along the top of the panel that does not have the wrap yet fixed onto it. This will make sure that when the final piece is put down that there are no gaps. Cut off any large amounts of excess on the ends. It just makes it that little bit easier to work with when you're folding the corners. Smooth over again with the squeegee. Just make sure that you do not have any air bubbles in before you fold the edges over. Run along the edges again and just make sure that everything is secure and in place. Trim off any excess on the inner panel. Make a vertical cut on the overhang. When you fold over your corner, this will fold over the top of it to secure it into place. Simply push down each of the edges as you wrap around the edge of the door. Secure out any bubbles on both sides of the door.
fold over the edge of the long side of the door first and trim off any excess in the corner. Pull the bottom edge over tightly to secure it into place. Smooth out the edges again with the squeegee, making sure that everything is secure. Don't forget to do the underside of the door. Repeat this process with the other side of the frame. Take your final piece and place over the top to make sure this covers the final parts of the door that need to be covered. This will be easy to work with if you trim to size. So if there's too much excess, mark this and cut this off. Use the grid lines on the backing paper to make sure that you are cutting this straight. If you cut this too short now, you'll have to start this piece again. Put into place again, just make sure that everything is covered. Push into the central panel, just make sure that you do have enough space to overhang on the edges. Again, gently peel off the backing. Don't take off too much, you only need to stick down a small amount of this at the moment. It's really important that this part stays in alignment. It really would help if you had someone holding the other side just to make sure that you haven't gone out of line. If you start putting this into place when this isn't aligned up properly, you'll have to peel back the backing and start again. So this is a really important step not to miss. Using the squeegee, start pushing down on that bottom end panel. Carefully peel back any overhang on the indentation ridges and then use the edge of the squeegee to push down into place. Make sure that this is completely covered. If you do have any gaps, don't worry. You can actually just cut off another piece of the product, stick it underneath and then push this piece over the top of it. That should cover any gaps. Make a slight cut in each of the corners where you're going to push down into the middle panel, which makes it a little bit easier to work with. Also, trim off any excess on the indentation ridge. Try not to push through too hard, you don't want to cut underneath. Once the excess is trimmed, 
push into the ridges again with the square edge of the squeegee. This will just make sure that everything is tightly tucked down and stuck together. Press the product over onto that edge that fits down into the middle panel. Be really careful with this. You'll see in a minute that I've actually ripped the paper as I've been pushing it along because I was doing it a little bit too rough. Here's where I've ripped the product. What I'm going to do is just pull this back and add another piece underneath so that once it's pushed back down again, you shouldn't be able to see it. It is on the very edge of the middle panel, so it shouldn't be too noticeable. I decided just in case I was to do this again, it was probably best off just putting an edging piece on either side. So that's what I'm doing here. Trimmed off cut pieces come in really handy for this. Any bits that I cut off, I tend to just stick to the edge of the table. It means they're easily accessible and very good for just repairing small pieces like this. So now that those repairs have been made, I can go back to pushing this piece down on the centre panel. If you're struggling to get down into the corners, it probably just means that there's a little bit too much excess product there. So just use your knife, simply cut into it and fold it into place, push down into the corners. This works for me. You are repeating the process here but backwards. So trim into your corners and then push down onto the panel and then push down into the indentation ridges. For your final edges, just simply fold over and then cut away any excess. You can simply just do a really sharp straight line, pull the backing up and then pull out the excess pieces from underneath.
Turn over the door and tidy up the edges. Just use your knife and a ruler to cut them straight. And here we have the finished door. This is much trickier than doing a standard cupboard door just because you've got the edges there that need to go in. Just make sure that you don't have any bubbles. These do tend to pop up a little bit in the corners. You can also go over with a heat gun or a hairdryer in the edges just to make sure that these are all stuck down. I think that this is a really good product to work with and it's very affordable. It cost me just £5 for a two metre roll from B&Q. They wear a range of colours too. To see how I've transformed my kitchen using this product for only £40, please see the link in the description. Thanks very much for watching. Please consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video. Bye.